Hey guys, Brandon here with Texas Plinking. In this video, we're going to be discussing is the Barrett M82 inaccurate? Now, some people are watching going, yes, of course it's inaccurate. We all know this. Some people are wondering, well, why would it be? It's a sniper looking thing with a scope. It's got to be pretty accurate. And some people are saying, Brandon, make it quick. I just pinched off a deuce and I'm about to wipe. Let's just start from the beginning. It came to fruition in the early 80s and it's been known as the Light 50, although it weighs, you know, right around 30 or so pounds, especially once an optic's thrown on there. It's not light, but you know, in the early 80s, the 50 BMG was a BMG, a uh, Browning machine gun. It was a belted machine gun. That's what everyone knew the 50 BMG as until this rifle really changed it. So this was more of a personable, you know, not quite a rabbit hunting setup, but it was a rifle uh, that one man can operate. But the one thing to know about the Barrett M82 or the newer M107, which is very similar, is they are not designated as marksmen or sniper rifles by any stretch of the imagination. They are anti-material rifles. You have material, this is anti that, okay? It's just meant to destroy things. It's a 50 BMG that takes a 10 round mag and more wieldable than other 50 BMGs. I think you guys get where I'm going with that. Now, when people call the Barrett M82 inaccurate, that's probably when they're referring to the fact that it may be a three and a half to four and a half MOA rifle. If you guys don't know what that means, MOA or minute of angle, just for the layman out there to make it quick, think about accuracy as a cone. To shoot within one MOA is considered a very accurate rifle. Let's just round down. One MOA is about one inch per 100 yards, which is to say it's a two inch group at 200 yards, a 10 inch group at 1,000. I think you guys get where I'm going. This has been known to be a three and a half to four and a half MOA rifle, meaning it might put together a near five inch group at 100 yards. That is far from impressive, especially when you're talking about precision rifles or actual sniper rifles, which this again is not. Let's say it's a four MOA rifle. Well, credit to something that's as powerful as a 50 BMG, there's this certain point way, and I mean way down range, that's actually not such a bad thing. Take the grouping of a very accurate 5.56, shooting well below one MOA, you could easily shoot an apple off someone's head, not recommended, uh, but at 100 yards all day long. And eventually, because it goes subsonic again, eventually it tapers off and it totally falls off that cone of accuracy. Now enter something like a 6.5 Creedmoor. Same crazy precision, but because it's got more mass, maybe that cone of accuracy stays a little longer, but it too will eventually fall off. Now enter something like, again, hypothesizing here, let's say this is always going to be a 4 MOA rifle. That doesn't look so sexy at 100 yards, or 200, or 3, or even 500 yards. But there is this one point where that taper stays consistent to where it will outperform a 5.56, a very accurate 5.56 that was sub MOA. And eventually it'll catch up to that 6.5 Creedmoor. When I got this rifle about four years ago, I heard that it is about a 4 MOA rifle. So I never put some really expensive 50 BMG through it. Uh, all 50 BMG is pretty expensive, but I was spending between two and three dollars a shot on some ball rounds that comes in links like this and I manually take the links out. Obviously you could tell this is made for a machine gun which is not going to be so accurate. I've been able to hit things at 2,000 yards with the same ammo. Not with crazy good effectiveness, but hey, it gets there. I've always tasked this as being a 4 MOA gun, so who cares? Well, last summer, you guys may have seen the video where I got a Desert Tech HTI in 50 BMG. Now that is a bolt action precision 50 BMG, known to shoot about 1 MOA if conditions are right and the ammo's right. So I had it out here just about a year ago, and just to run through the motions on my first day with it, I put the same exact ammo, and lo and behold, at 100 yards, where I expected maybe I'll get two inches because it's still crappy ammo, I was getting the exact same three and a half to four and a half inches that the Barrett was getting. So two things, either the HTI is just a load of crap, or maybe the M82 is more accurate than we give it credit for. So soon after I was getting those piss poor results with the HTI, I spent the coin, and got some Hornady 750 grain AMAX rounds. This stuff is as accurate as it gets for factory loaded 50 BMG. And it better be because it's priced around seven to $10 a round, ouch. But I'm just curious, you know, if my HTI was starting to put rounds, you know, about an inch, which is impressive with any other rifle, but a 50 where it's gonna carry that grouping way beyond uh, most cartridges effective range. So the difference of course is this is a semi-auto. So when it shoots, the barrel actually reciprocates just a little bit and that's how it cycles. So with that being said, you got your optic mounted on something else and the barrel's consistently moving. So that's why I've always chalked it up as being a four and a half MOA rifle, but it was probably that ammo more than anything else. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is just a uh, shot into the dirt, just one, just to get some temperature in the barrel. I'm not in a lab coat or nothing, so we're not gonna get too scientific, but let's just get it warmed up here.
I haven't shot this guy in a while. I miss it. All right, so now that there's some temperature, let's load up three of the ball rounds. And I'm just gonna go for the left side of that cardboard target. I'm gonna go for number eight on the left, just so there's some margin of error. Three rounds, as tight of a group as I could do. Tell you what, I'm gonna spend the penny. Let's do two more ball, then we'll do five of the 750s. It is a three and a half MOA out of five rounds. For a Barrett M82 661, 662 grain ball that I just delinked, that's what you could expect. That's actually not that bad. All right, five rounds, 750. Let's try it out. Wow, this mag has never been this expensive. I take that back. I've actually shot some Ralphus rounds once. That was bad. I think I'm going to aim for the seven, which is the lowest number. That way, I'm just guaranteed it catches that berm. No kidding. Oh, come on. Keep that up. Oh, strung out a little left there. That one followed suit. A little left on that one. Uh, just under two and a quarter inches. I was thinking if it was right around two, I think that was going to be pretty good out of a Barrett M82. But here's the thing, though. There is something to fouling it out and just clearing it out and maybe eventually start grouping tad left knowing this though that's cool enough of this close range crap let's stretch it out a little bit all right so one mile is 1760 yards we're a little bit beyond that we're at 1817 it's a big target so we're gonna hit it but the internal square is half moa and then the painted square the larger one is one moa just so you guys get some uh basis for the size of the target here. I see that. That looks good. We are good on elevation, just a bit left. I'm seeing red lights, <clears throat> so I know we're getting hits. I just, that one I couldn't tell. Was that dead center? I think that's dead center, but I cannot see. But Was that in the white? I think five more we'll call it good i just love stretching the legs on the m82 man it just it lives out here anything all right it's a hit just can't tell where man 14 powers just not gonna be able to tell me That's a good smack, just can't really tell where. Well, that's all folks. Tell you what, for fun, I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture through the scope so you guys can kind of get my visual reference. And for full transparency, to gauge the accuracy of the rifle, just seeing this footage ain't gonna do it. Cause you guys don't know what I'm seeing. Based off my confidence with every shot, it wasn't the exact same dead hold. This thing still moves around. So I was holding slightly right. Sometimes I held dead center. So I changed my hold a little bit. Um, so there's that. Is the Barrett M82 inaccurate? Well, to be fair, I think it's far from inaccurate. Uh, if you feed it some good expensive stuff, turns out it's not that bad. Uh, it just cost a lot. That does it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good one.